Is everything ready? I told you everything is ready. Stand still. You're as white as a stalk of celery. Apples, lemons, peaches, jam. Jam? Did you forget the jam? Sounds, I did. We are lost. She may not call for it. Which door? Which door? The big one, idiot. Be still. Lords and ladies of the court, this is an important moment in the history of our reign. The Lady Violetta, whom you love and respect, <clears throat> that is, I mean to say, whom the ladies love and the lords respect, is about to prove whether or not she be fitted to hold the exalted position of Queen of Hearts. Am I late? I just remembered, and came as fast as I could. What were you doing in the garden? Oh, it was too funny. I must tell you, I found a goat there who had a beard just like the Chancellor's. Really, it was quite remarkable, the resemblance. Begin at once. The people are clamoring at the gates. Bring the ingredients. Oh, what darling little ingredients. Your Majesty, Lords and Ladies of the Court, I propose to make raspberry hearts. Heavens be kind to us. Then, Pompadilly, I'm very sorry. We shall have to postpone it. If I may be allowed to suggest, the Lady Violetta can prepare something else. Why, the law distinctly says that the Queen-elect has the privilege of choosing the dish which she prefers to prepare. Dearest Papa Dilly, please. We are inclined to think that there may be something in what the Lady Violetta says. I can no longer remain silent. It is due to that brilliant law of Pomptabilly the First, justly called the Great, that all members of our male sex are well fed, and, as a natural consequence, happy. The happiness of a set of moles who never knew the sunlight. If we made an effort, we could think of a new law, just as wise. It only requires effort. But the Constitution. We can't touch the Constitution, Pomptabilly. The people are clamoring at the gates. Thank you. Now we are ready to begin. Milk, please. I take some of this milk and I beat it well. Beat it? Milk? Then I put in two tablespoons of salt, making great care that it falls exactly in the middle of the bowl. Now the flour, no, no, the pepper. And then one pound of butter. I don't understand it. I find that the, if the butter is not very good, it makes a great difference. I shall have to use more pepper to counteract it. A little brown tart with raspberry jam in the very middle. Now, a dash of vinegar. Vinegar? Great gosling's vinegar? Vinegar will make them crumbly. Do you like them crumbly, Pompadilly, darling? They're really for you, you know, since I'm trying by this example to show all the wives how to please all the husbands. Remember that they are to go in the museum with the tests of the previous queens. Oh, yes, I had forgotten that. Under the circumstances, I shall omit vinegar. We don't want them too crumbly. They would fall about and catch the dust so frightfully. The museum keeper would never forgive me in years to come. Now, I dip them by the spoonful into this pan, and I fill them with the nice raspberry jam. Here, put them in the oven. Now, 
Now slam the door. Now, my pump, the fire will do the rest. It gave us great pleasure to see the ease with which you performed your task. You must have been practicing for weeks. This relieves, somewhat, the anxiety under which we have been suffering and makes us think that we would enjoy a game of checkers once more. How long a time will it take for your creation to be thoroughly done so that it may be tested? About twenty minutes, Pompey. Inform the people. Come, we will retire. Take them out of the oven. Let's look. That's what I intended to do. It's possible that a miracle's occurred. How queer. They've melted or something. See? They're quite soft and runny. You think that they will be good for anything, Knave? Mm, for paste, my lady, perhaps. Oh, dear. Isn't it dreadful? It is. I don't want to be banished, especially on a mule. Well, don't cry, my lady. It's very upsetting. <laughs> but, but I would make a delightful queen. Ah. Uh. Those stupid tars. And wouldn't I make a pretty picture garlanded with flowers, followed by the cheers of the populace. Long live Queen Violetta. Long live Queen Violetta. I'm afraid that her ladyship is vain. I am indeed. Isn't it fortunate? Fortunate? Well, I mean it would be fortunate if I was going to be queen. They get so much flattery. The queens who don't adore it as much as I do must be bored to death. Poor things. You will never be queen, my lady. Unless we can think of something quickly, some plan. Oh, oh yes, dear Knave, please think of a plan at once. Banished people, I suppose, have to comb their own hair, put on their own shoes, and button themselves up the back. I have never performed these estimable and worthy tasks, Knave. I don't know how. Save me, Knave, please. Mm, my mind is unhappily a blank, Your Majesty. It's very unjust. Unjust indeed. No other queen in the world has to understand cooking. Even the Queen of Spades doesn't. I've heard of a proverb. The way to the heart is through the... Oh, don't repeat that hateful proverb. Nothing can make me more angry. I, I feel like crying when I hear it, too. Now, see, I'm crying. You made me. But why does that proverb make you cry, my lady? Oh, because it's such a stupid proverb and so silly. And because it's, it's true in most cases and because... Oh, I don't know why. Have you something to suggest? A plan, perhaps? Why, if only there were time, my wife could teach you. Yes, that's all very nice. All they care about here. One may be oh so cheerful and, and kind and nice in every other way. Oh, if one can't cook, nobody loves one at all. Oh. Beasts! My higher nature cries out at them for holding such views. Fool! Swine! But my lower nature whispers that perhaps, after all, they're not far from right. And as it's my lower nature is the only one that ever gets any encouragement. Mm. Then you think that there's nothing to be done? I shall have to be banished. I'm afraid. Wait, I have an idea. Lucinia, my wife, her name Lucinia, made known to me this morning, very forcibly, 
Yes, I remember, I'm sure. Yes, she was going to bake this very morning some raspberry tarts. A dish in which she practically excels. Why, if only I could procure some of them and bring them here. Hmm, oh, knave. Dearest, sweetest knave. Could you, I mean, I mean, would you? Is there time? The court will return. I shall run as fast as I can. Don't let anyone come back in here, if you can help it. Okay, knave. You're very clever. How clever of you to think of it. Who is there? His Majesty is impatient. I, I said 20 minutes to get them good and warm, and, and another 20 minutes for them to become brown. That makes 40, don't you remember? I shall carry your message to His Majesty. The King commands you to open the door. C commands Tell him he's... Is he there with you? His Majesty is at the door. Oh. Pompey, I think you are rude. Very rude indeed. I don't see how you can be so rude to... To command me, your... Your own Violetta, who loves you so. Oh, dear. Where can he be? It is a compliment to you. Only I'm sure they're not finished. The pastry cooks will remove the tarts from the oven. Oh, no, Pompey, they aren't finished or, or cooked or, or whatever one calls it. They are not. The last five minutes is of the greatest importance. Please don't let them touch them. Please. There, there, my dear Violetta. Calm yourself. I if you wish, they will put them back again. There can be no harm in looking at them. Come, I will hold your hand. Your Majesty. There are no tarts there. Your Majesty, the tarts have gone. The tarts have been stolen. Stolen? Oh, I shall faint. Help me. Oh, oh, to think that anyone would take my delicious little, dear little tarts. Oh, my salts. Oh, oh. Salts. Bring the Lady Violetta's salts. Uh, I feel better now. Where am I? What is the matter? Oh, I remember. Oh, my poor little tarts. Your Majesty, this is very strange. I know. Your Majesty, it was the knave. Of course it was he. We shall banish him for this, or have him beheaded. Should have been done long ago, Your Majesty. You are right. Your Majesty will never listen to me. That is not necessary. It's in the Constitution. Be quiet. Your Majesty. Be quiet. You have been discharged. They found him. They found him. Your Majesty, he was sitting under the shrubbery eating a tart. Eating a tart? Eating a tart, did you say? The scoundrel! Bring him here immediately. What prompted you to commit this dastardly crime? Well, I was in the garden reading, as is my habit, when a delicate odor floated to my nostrils. A pervasive odor. A seductive, light, brown, flaky odor. An odor, oh, so enticing, so suggestive of tarts fit for the gods it was stronger than I why with one gesture I threw reputation my chances for future happiness to the winds 
and leap through the window. The odor led me to the oven. I seized a tart, and eating it, oh, oh, experienced the one perfect moment of my existence. Oh, after having eaten that one tart, my craving for the other tarts has disappeared. I shall live with the memory of that first tart before me forever, or die content having tasted true perfection. Hmm, how extraordinary. May we forgive your offense. The temptation was very great. There are things that mere human nature cannot be expected to resist. Another tart, cooks, and yet another. But, your, your Majesty, don't eat them all. You must go to the museum with the dishes of the previous Queens of Hearts. Long live Pumptabilly the Eighth and Queen Violetta. Make way for Pumptabilly the Eighth. And Queen Violetta. Violetta, please. Make way for Pumpta Billy the Eighth and Queen Violetta.